Quaker Oats has developed a cereal that, that hasn't got a name, but they want to build a, a ad campaign around it, and that they want to do it with a character who could maybe be spun into doing as an, an entertainment series. And he says, you know, I hate doing commercials, but, but the other part of it sounds like it could be fun. Look at the stuff, taste it, decide if you can come up with anything. He says they want to emphasize that it's very crunchy and it will stay crunchy even in milk. So I went up and there was this bag of this stuff and I tasted it and I and, uh, tasted like it, it, would, it was going to shred my mouth. It was, it was so crunchy. And I called Jay back and I said, I think I've got a line. It's not stays crunchy even in milk. This would be stays crunchy even in hydrochloric acid. This, is, this stuff is going to shred children's mouths all over America. Uh, so he said, well, look, if you think you can come up with something that, 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 that these guys would be interested in, they're going to be in on Friday or something, and this was Tuesday, uh, if you can whip something together. And so in that time, that little period of time, I came up with the name Captain Crunch. And, and drew this character, this old Horatio Hornblower kind of little cartoony figure with one of those Navy, old British Navy hat. And I called Jay and I told him about this and he laughed. He said, oh, it sounds like fun. These guys will be out there and, and uh, why don't you pitch it to them? And here I am, I'm, I'm like uh, oh, 27 probably at that time and I've never pitched anything to anybody. And, uh, these guys came out, these very serious guys from, from Compton Advertising came out, um, were fairly miffed that Jay wasn't there to beat him, that he had sent his kid in, in his stead, but nevertheless laughed, you know? And they said, well, we'll let you know. I know they were meeting with five or six animation houses in town, including Hanna-Barbera and a few others. Uh, and, uh, I forget, you know, literally I forgot about it. They, they left, and about a month later, I was working in my office there. This was a falling down building, by the way. It was, it was just absolutely was uh, uh, held together with duct tape and, and uh, termites holding their hands together to, to keep the walls from collapsing. And I'm sitting in this little dingy little office, and Jay comes in going, hey, guess what? We sold that, that Captain Crunch thing. Well, do you realize how many years Captain Crunch has been on the air uh, and, and in cereal boxes? And they've done Crunch this and Crunch that. And you know, Butter Crunch and Crunch Berries. Crunch Berries. Everything you can imagine. And that was 1962. It sounds to me like 40, 42 years that that has been going on. It's, it, it boggles my mind. But I got a, a bonus for, for creating this character that was to be on the air for 42 years and make him God, untold millions of dollars. And I'm sure, I'm sure that his estate still collects on this. I got $1,000 for creating this thing, and that was it. When, when you're an animation writer, you have no rights. There's no union for animation writers. Uh, even today, uh, animation writers are the most uh, 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 over, underpaid, overutilized people in the business.